just going to be just a, a bit of a video, just me going around the van. Um, I'm kind of setting it up for um, our trip tomorrow, the Lady Osa. Um, so I'm going to be in there, and then in between doing jobs, getting ready for tomorrow. Just going to like observe what things that things that I think I need to do with it. Um, obviously, any any help would be uh, appreciated. I'm going to talk about barbecues, storage things. I've got a big garage. We can actually take quite a weight. So, um, solar panels, um, your windows, a little bit of paintwork. Um, yeah, it's just basically just a sort of, it's sort of like an introduction to our, our new van, which we love. Um, getting plenty of use out of it. Use, probably use the caravan <coughs> when we had it, at least once a month, I'd say. It was always like two and three nights. It was never long distance. We did we did one long one last uh, summer, uh, where we went up to as f just across the border in France. Um, we were away for two and a half weeks. Loved it, but you get tired driving when it, you were pulling the caravan. It's one reason why I wanted the motorhome. Um, and also, you can just, you can just get further, and you can stop off grid, get your head down, crack on, get to the next place, get as far as it be, places like that. <laughs> we 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 didn't realise, well we forgot actually, how expensive France was and wondered why there was no Spanish people on this site. Um, we must have only been 40 kilometres into France and you could not see one Spanish person there. You could say, what? Um, I've just quit smoking and that was another thing we noticed. Just before we crossed the border into France, loads of tobacco shops. Like, that's that's odd. And it did not click until I ran out. And I had to go to the shop. And then three times more. I should I should have been aware. Bear, bear in mind the UK is probably the same kind of places that we thought as uh, France. But down here in Spain, everything's so much cheaper. So I can see why um, the Spanish won't go on holiday 40 kilometers into a different country just to say they've been there um brilliant holiday all the same but we want to get we want to get further um so being able to um stop anywhere not anywhere fog for night things like that you know those apps um which you can't do in a caravan um a lot of these auto caravana sites or motorhome sites they don't let you stop um, there is a there is the odd few especially if it's quiet and stuff like that but um, you want to kind of just drive until you know you just you know what I'm feeling tired let's find something in the next 15 minutes 30 minutes get a head down and really make a dent so you actually get to see a lot a lot more places we do things a bit differently than um, we watch so many so many YouTube uh, videos when it comes to motorhomes. Which is why I just thought it's a bit of fun just to blog basically what what we do. Because we live in southern Spain, we get to go out, I would say once a month. And now we've got the motorhome, it may be more often because it's just a case of jumping in and going. There's a lot more prep needed with the caravan it's in storage you can't leave it outside your house you've got to leave it in storage you've only got to pick it up you've got to bring it over load it all up then you've got to load the car up once you've finished using the car for the week whereas the motorhome can be prepped and ready to go three four days before sat there ready to just jump in and but we're, we're in a lucky spot where there's so many things within an hour away and two hours away where we can just fly off and do stuff, which we did a lot with the caravan. But being, being that we live here, seeing more of the country, because Spain is big, Spain is big. Um, we're actually only three hours from a ski resort, which there isn't any snow yet, but come December, you can be on the beach in the morning and then go to Sierra Nevada for the afternoon ski. Um, there's a there's actually a couple of campsites up there as well. So uh, I'm not sure if I've got electric, but by December, that's another thing. 
my uh, solar will be updated. I have it, but it is poor. Uh, so yeah, this next 20 minutes is me talking to myself <laughs> and pottering around. Um, I'll have a few questions and if you, anyone's watching and can help me in any other way. We're new to the motorhome side, not so much new to the camping side, but new to the motorhome side definitely. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Short video of how annoying these are. Every time you come to get these, do you not find that you're always turning the wrong way? Because why do they turn that way? And then, even when you come to lock them, you always seem to turn the wrong way. It's always the garage one, eh? And then you go to the other one, and you would think, oh, well, it's just going to be the opposite way. But because you always go to the other garage one first, when you come to this one, you turn it the wrong way as well. It's like, it's a bit like a USB. You know when you go to put a USB cable? You go to put a USB cable in anything, right? It's always the wrong way around. Why is that? It's the same as, same as these bloody locks. Pain in the arse. Anyway, went over. Get a look at the front end of this beast. Me beast. It absolutely dwarfs the X5, like. But it's got the equivalent of what, 50,000 miles on it. It's got 90 something thousand kilometers on it. It's barely running. I've just had to do the headlamps because they were all clouded. You get that a lot here. I'm trying to keep on top of the cars ones as well. It's really quite poor. Um, there is a little bit of touch. Up. I'm going to take that bumper off at some point. Again, it's on the list. I've only had it a month. Um, take that bumper off. That is actually the original colour that came out of Remore. But I'm going to try and match it to the colour that they make the panels. Because I've seen every other single um, Rimmer. And they've all got that same sort of, it's a kind of grey coloured bumper. Um, but it doesn't match the sides, which are kind of cream. It's just it's weird. There is another job. And it's that window at the top. But as we don't get much rain, I ain't too fussed about that at the minute. It doesn't actually leak, to be honest. Previous owners have done a patchy repair, and if I'm honest, it looks crap, which is the reason why I would have to fix it. But it is not up there on the list, to be honest. Um, solar panels are on the first list. So what I've got at the minute, working out how much I'm uh, managing to harness the sun, I think I may have a 50 or a 75 watt solar panel. Um, and it's working full tilt all the time because cha -ching, it's always sunny. However, it's only got a 95 amp hour, um, 95 amp hour lead battery, it's not even an AGM. So I think it's it's probably I don't think it came as factory standard like this. Would you? I don't think so. I think it's been updated and it's a bit of a mess really. Look at the size of the charge controller. It's, I don't even think it's a charge controller, I just think it's a sort of uh fused. You see, I don't even think it's got a charge controller as such. It's definitely not an MPPT, which is what I'll end up putting in. And I'm probably going to go for three or 400 amp hour lithium, which will get me six to eight times more storage of energy. So, there's a few, a few little uh, jobs in it. I, I'm, I want to get a new... Uh, Exhaust I was fixing the other day. It's just down there. You just kind of see it. Yeah, I've rerouted that because it was all the way over the other side of the van, and it's just far too long. Unsure if it was factory. Um, have to be honest, I think there was originally another um, diesel heater in there, which actually may have sat inside the engine bay because there's, there's a kind of like you can see a bit of ducting that has been there and has gone into the cab 
and it's been removed and they've put a Webasto one in, which are pretty good. And it does work really well, to be honest. Another thing, when we bought it, the guy didn't even know much about this. He didn't even know where the off um, isolator taps for the for the gas was, for like the cooker and fridge and etc. So he didn't even know what I was on about. And he didn't even know that it actually has gas low. So it's refillable tank. And I know they're quite expensive. So someone, the previous owner to the guy I bought it from, has spent a bit of money putting some branded high-end gear in. It's just a shame they didn't go crazy on the solar. Because uh, I don't think it's got a, um, a shore power charge system on it. Because my 12 volt system, the battery will die um, by the morning having the max fan on. So that means when I'm uh, plugged in on site, it's not uh, um, it's not charging the batteries. So um, I need to get a charger for that and get that. So when I'm on site, it'll at least charge overnight. Um, but having said that, I'm probably going to get the solar panels and lithium first anyway, so that problem won't arise, although it would be a good um, further down the line to get that. Um, Victron DC, DC charger, I think, is also on the cards. Um, but yeah, there she is. Eleanor Rig. Our old uh, caravan, which we've, you can see the videos. Royal Caravan were called Luciana van der Rigg because that actually originated in Holland. Um, I have to close a few of the curtains. The roof. Let's open this big old roof so we can see something in the air. Uh, I always do that. Shit myself. Pardon my French. Yeah, we. Uh, I saw I had Luciana van der Rigg, which we um, bought. The caravan was bought and it was the cheapest one we could find in the whole of Spain at the time. And it had um, a house window at the front, so it had shutters. <laughs> it's mad. Um, but sanded it all back, sprayed it all up, repainted it, um, did a good job. Flipped it, actually made some good money on that, doubled my money. Actually ended up removing that front window and replacing it with a proper window. So it did look nice. I didn't actually do any videos on that um, when it was um, doing the window. It was quite easy, really. But it did uh, make it look a bit more normal. But it was like kind of like a white and then grey and then black colour scheme. So I take that as like sort of the Australian sort of ways the um, caravans look at the minute. Some of the um, American ones as well. They like that sort of. But it was retro. It was 1988, I think it was. So, quite old, but it had been updated gradually over its lifetime, and it, it was, yeah, I sold it, and it was in very good condition, so. Now we've got a 2004, huge beast. One of the main selling points for this for us, though, I'm telling you now, is making up a bed, in the, especially in that small caravan, every evening was an absolute pain. Although, when you live in Spain and it's warm weather and stuff like that, you just leave them, the beds made constantly because you don't need to sit inside and have your dinner because you're always outside. It's outside living. Um, but when it came to the, to the motorhome, we wanted two separate beds. Ideally, we wanted this. So the double bed at the front, double bed at the back, and Isabella's bit, she can leave all her toys and everything. Our bit, so the beds were always made. And then we've also, also got... Um, passenger seats and also somewhere to dine if we want to or she can play with her toys or drawer and stuff like that um, we were lucky when this one came up because a lot of the ones were bunks and also the overhead cab beds some of them are so narrow like this is probably uh, I don't know just over a metre height Rise. Some of them were half a meter. Some of them felt like about a foot, uh, which that would have been our bed, and Isabella would have been in the the bunks. And then the bunks 
say if I wanted to sleep in one of the bunks and Isabella and Lauren were up here, they were too short. So they're like 190s. And when you're pushing, about, when you're about 190 and you've got headboards on either side, that ain't comfortable. So we are well pleased. Well pleased. So yeah. Um, nothing happened. I might go and eat some more Cheetos. Mm. Sounds like a good idea. Ta-ra. Trying to get the hang of uh, taking videos facing where I can't actually see the screen. So I apologise if it's all over the place. So is anyone else obsessed with these? Oh, amazing. But when I'm mildly diabetic, as I've been told, not that I'm fat or anything, bad diet must be. Another thing I'm obsessed with, which is good, and I'm actually allowed it. Cream soda, no percent sugar, zero sugar. Got nothing. It's literally nutritional values it's zero 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 zero. Which, considering how sweet it is, mental. So that gives me my sh sugar, sugary sweet hit. And these Cheetos are just a literally a cheat day. But I do end up eating the whole bag. Oh, but the old wasp just came out of them. He obviously likes them as well. So, there. There you go. So, yeah, a little skit there. Cream soda. Good all the time. Cheetos. I don't cheat day. And back to it. It's the day before we go to Vallejosa. Um, just thinking about what to eat. Because at the minute, I've got no barbecue. Sold it. It was an electric one. Weber. It was like a Q... Something. 1600 or whatever it is. Can't quite remember. Um, but we found that it was a bit of an issue on a few sites anyway. So um, we decided to sort of... To sell the caravan. Sweeten the deal. That we would um, sell the um, barbecue with, with it. Because it, yeah, it tripped a few sites, would have been quite, quite powerful, obviously drawing that much electricity. Um, and we want to get a gas, either a gas one the same, originally the same as the Weber, but, um, which obviously has the top, and it, they fall down quite small, and you have your outside kitchen, etc. But we started looking at these Kadak ones. Um, I think it's like a Kadak 3. Pro Deluxe, so there's, there's slight differences between like there's a deluxe one and there's a non-pro one. I think they're about 160 euros, but it's got it's basically a two burner hob, I believe. Um, two burner hob, but it's got two plates on it, so one could be like a griddle, one would be like a frying pan, or you can put pots and pans on it. So I thought it was quite a good sort of like way of having various different options depending on what you're cooking. I do like the barbecues. I've actually got two of these ones, Spirit 2s. One in the back, one in the front. I've also got a Weber kettle in the back. Obviously, these are just too big. And I've got my uh, hand-built one, the oven underneath, uh, fireplace, sorry. So, yeah, the barbecue is uh, up there on the agenda. Um, but it's not so much of an issue. We've found, we've only been, we've only had it a month, the motorhome. But it's not so much of an issue as what we've found before because there's so much space. You know, we've got like a, probably like a metre and a half worth of a kitchen top that we can prep and stuff. And obviously got three burner hob, which we did actually have in the, uh, mo uh, in the caravan, but the caravan's so small. You're literally cooking in the only floor space. Um, so we've not really found it too much of a, a downside at, at the minute because we can cook inside um, but it's definitely on the agenda and also probably having some sort of gas fitment outside hookup fitting into po uh, probably the same side as the door so it's underneath the awning still maybe nearer to the back because we've always seen the set of the barbecue when we had the caravan the barbecue was always at the back um, so like quick release um, 
But if anyone's if anyone's got the Cadax, let us know if it's any uh, if it's any good or if, if you can recommend something else. I think um, Camp and Gas do a similar one. We want something that's not too big. That's 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 the advantage of that. Whereas the Weber one, obviously with the big lid, it ends up being quite a chunky little a chunky thing. And when you've got yes, if we've got a big garage, and yes, we can carry nearly five hundred kilos. Um, the issue of being once you've got bikes in there and you're utilizing that space, um, you don't want something that's going to take up far too much space and it's an awkward shape. So, yeah, we're just hobbing it at the minute or eating out because sometimes in Spain it's actually just as cheap to eat out as it is to to buy from the supermarket. Del Diaz, some places around here you can get them for nine euros, three courses with a drink, a beer, or Half bottle of red wine, so you can two people can eat under twenty euros easily, if not sixteen. So yeah, I, I quite like the Cadillac. I've just got a soft touch for Weber. I've got four of them. <laughs> it's difficult, but yeah. Any any uh, recommendations? Knock them in the comments. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. <laughs>